Hi, I'm Francesco. I'm a senior studying game design at Marys College in Poughkeepsie, New York. And this is Block Arena. It's a game with a very stupid name that I thought about when I was playing Zelda, because, you know, Ocarina, Block Arena. God, that was terrible. But anyways, this is a game that I've created in about a week, about uh, 35 hours of coding. And I've used about 40% of the code that I had from a previous game that I've created. And I wanted to think differently about how boss fights can be designed. In several MMOs that I've played, there are different difficulties for boss fight. And I felt that very few have experimented with the concept of designing the hardest difficulty of the encounter first. It felt like an afterthought most of the time. And I felt like most of them simply focus on the normal or easier mode first and then add more mechanics to create a difficult version. In this game, I've decided to experiment with a different approach. I've developed the hardcore mode first with the mindset that I would have shifted some of the elements to other difficulties and then ultimately remove some of the elements that are part of the encounter that help the player to define the hardest mode. So in this way I have a robust hardcore version of the fight and I have also a progression of the difficulties that feels connected and not an afterthought. By not adding anything to the design and removing some helpful information in the hardest mode, I aimed to design an experience that tries to be as efficient as possible. Now the reason why I did this is because most MMOs out there have an efficiency problem. Especially in MMORPGs, some of the design content won't ever be played by players because the entry barrier is just too high. It's just too difficult. As in MMOs, player bases become more and more casual. From an economic point of view, it makes sense to address this issue. If time and money is spent to develop content that is never played, it shows that there might be a different way to design the encounters to allow more players to experience those more difficult fights, but still feeling the challenge. However, some games purposely design dungeons and raids to be inefficient, so that it creates a sort of small niche of players, and because it's a small niche and that really reach the hardest modes, it feels even more rewarding. And without diving too much into reward psychology, you know, just, just know that bigger challenges provide bigger rewards on a psychological level. However, from an economic point of view, I felt like it was interesting to take a different approach to design the encounters and sort of focus first on the hardest mode and then actually take off some elements to define what the hardcore mode is. So it creates a sort of more connected experience and it, it's not as scattered and, and it's not like the mechanics really change that much. Of course, yes, some skills really have to make the player rethink about the fight, but it doesn't feel as disconnected as I felt in some boss fights in some MMOs. So Block Arena, as you can see here, this is my game and I have single player mode, multiplayer mode and whatever credits, it's just me. And then uh, regarding single player mode, I kind of thought about it as a training. So sort of you get used to the commands and you get used to the idea of the boss fight. The multiplayer mode is the one that I really uh, sort of tried to design as best as I could, of course, in, in, in a week. Uh, I had three different modes. Basically, the, at the beginning I didn't even have modes. I was just trying to define a boss fight that was interesting. But then on the fourth day I was like, hey, let me try to put different difficulties and see what's the best one. Because I had a, a robust boss fight. So, disclaimer, it's it, they're all blocks. I'm a programmer, so of course the art is, is nothing good. Um, they're all blocks and the boss fight is a big block. And um, the skills... There are three major skills that you're gonna see from the boss. Uh, the first one is basically the top half of the world, the map, is red and you have to go on the bottom half or you're gonna get damaged. Same for the second skill, it's just reversed. And the third skill is basically the entire map is red except for a small part on the right. So you have to go on that small part on the right. Basically, these skills come up randomly. So even the next boss fight is just gonna be completely random. And I've taken off all, you know, the combat system. All those things can be added later. I am just focusing on the combat of the of the boss, like how how the boss fight is developed. And of course, you know, the boss can get harder and harder, or there can be multiple bosses and ads and and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to focus on what the boss is and how the difficulties sort of relate to each other. So the way that I've developed these difficulties is sort of pick different skills that the player needs to have. So like a Twitch style game is going to focus on like reflexes and, and how fast I can click something and how fast I can see something. So I took those skills and created some features that challenge the player in those skills. Then I've looked into teamwork, I've looked into strategy, and I've sort of placed in a number of these, these skill sets, I've placed different features that the player you know needs to, to think about. 
and the harder the difficulty gets, it's not really that a lot of elements are put into the game, it's simply that you have less information, so you kind of have to memorize from previous fights what you have to do, and then you just have to, to get better at the fight itself and just think more on each thing that you're doing. So the easy mode uh, has a revive, which is a skill. You have two charges and it has cooldown. A healing pools, which are randomly placed pools that heal you not that much, but it heals you a little bit. More damage with teamwork, so that's basically you have your attack in the game. Of course, there is no combat system or anything, but you can think about this and design it as you want. This is just a concept, of course. It's a proof of concept. And um, basically, when you attack, you have like a yellow circle around your character and it's a toggle on and off. And if it's on, on both characters, and the two circles sort of touch each other, or two players are on top of each other, whatever that is, um, the, the yellow circles turn orange, and you do more damage. Not double, but almost. Then you have health points, so you can see the health points that you have. It gives you more information about your health. Um, you can see the boss cast bars, so you can, you can tell when a skill is coming, and they have different colors three different colors for three different skills so you know which one it is at the beginning you're not gonna know but after a while the experience you know i'm trying to reward the experience so of course different different skill bar colors are gonna be able to tell you okay like this is what's what's coming then the file is deactivated in the easy mode which is literally taken from the lich king this is all <laughs> all rights go back to blizzard of course but i kind of got the idea because i really like that skill and um you can see the, the cost bar that's kind of the fourth skill of the boss but i put it in a different um, cast bar because it's 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 a very difficult skill especially at the beginning to kind of counter because you have to move as soon as the skill is casted because it just spawns a gray square underneath one of the two players it's random and it doesn't say anything else you just have to move and it does a lot of damage so it's important, especially in, in hardcore mode, a little bit in normal mode, but especially in hardcore mode, to avoid that as fast as possible. Because in hardcore mode, you have no healing, you have no way of getting the health back. You have instructions, so basically instructions just tell you what to do, and so like how you move around, how you use skills, and the boss is not powerful, because of course it's an easy mode. In the hardcore mode, the boss basically kills you in two shots, and in the easy normal mode, I think it's three shots. So, you know, it helps a little bit more. In normal mode, then we have the file and we have no instructions and the boss is still not powerful. So the defile is an, an additional feature, of course, it's an additional skill that slightly changes the way that you have to think about um, your position mostly. Uh, it's not yet something that really throws you off. So basically in the hardcore mode, the defile gets bigger and bigger a lot faster. So it really forces you to kind of, it's kind of like a timer, but it, it doesn't have a number. And if you wait too long, it's going to come to a point where the defile is just that big that it doesn't let you go in certain places of the map, which makes the boss fight longer because you have to wait until the boss gets away from those places. And then it just basically makes you lose the game because you can't move around. In the easy normal mode, it's just a simpler version of the defile file that simply gets bigger but it's a lot slower so it kind of just trains you to avoid the gray area and the hardcore mode basically has nothing you have no revive no healing pools no more damage with teamwork i was debating whether i wanted to keep that but for now i'll just put it away because of course you do more damage if two people are attacking instead of one you just don't have that extra damage so the boss fight kind of lasts longer which puts you more pressure because the defile gets bigger you have no health points so it's kind of hard to tell how exactly how many health points you have there is no boss cast bar so you don't really know when the uh, skills are coming you kind of see the the, the red area you, you hear the casting sound and then you have to just move you have enough time mostly most of the time a secret is that on the hardcore mode you have to sort of stay in the center or on the right of the map simply because the two skills that you know do the top half or the bottom half and turn it red so that they do damage and um, those are kind of easy to avoid unless you're in a very bad place but the hardest one to avoid is the one where almost the entire map is red except for the right most part and that really forces you to stay sort of in the middle because if that skill comes up either you train yourself to exactly count how many seconds there are between each skill and each skill takes
takes different amount of time so you have to really you know it, it's kind of hard though because yes the difference is not that much i think it's like three four and four and a half seconds of cast but yet you have to know exactly like you don't know when they're casting it so it's kind of hard to tell so you just have to be ready and be sort of in the middle or on the right and it, if the boss goes on the left you just wait it really challenges the player in a sense and i play tazza with a couple players and that's that's what they feel as well so i think i'm i'm happy for now for a week old game there are no instructions of course there is the file and there is and the boss is more powerful so all the damage that you get is a lot bigger and you have to be very careful with everything you do and there is no healing so that that is really something that challenges the player there is no revive there's nothing on the screen it's just you the boss fight and your health bar near the character but it's very small there is not the big one with the number on the bottom of the screen so this is how I designed the game and uh, I'm very happy about how it is right now. I hope you enjoyed this little video about Block Arena and uh, I'll see you soon.